My name is Sam Wagner and I am the author of Malignant Self Love, Narcissism Revisited. As 2011 came to a close, and in the first months of 2012, the European Central Bank, ECB, initiated a massive injection of liquidity into Europe's embattled banking system. The ECB provided three-year loans amounting to a half trillion euros at nominal and minimal interest rates. At first, the risk-averse banks redeposited these funds with the ECB. Later, however, the banks embarked on an arbitrage operation of unprecedented proportions, using the cheap money they had borrowed to purchase sovereign bonds with historically high coupons and high yields issued by the likes of Italy and Spain. Thus, the ECB ended up fostering yet another unsustainable bubble in sovereign obligations. He, the ECB ended up threatening the balance sheets of the very institutions that it seeks to prop up. When the bubble inevitably bursts, when the prices of these sovereign obligation inevitably drops, the balance sheets, balance sheets of the banks are going to be damaged, possibly beyond repair and beyond the help of even the ECB itself. The global credit crunch, induced by the subprime mortgage crisis in the United States in the second half of 2007, engendered a tectonic, a paradigmatic shift in the way central banks perceive themselves and their role in banking and financial systems. On December 12, 2007, America's Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Canada, the Swiss National Bank, as well as the central banks of Japan and Sweden, joined forces in a plan to ease the worldwide liquidity squeeze. This collusion was a direct reaction to the fact that more conventional instruments have failed. Despite soaring spreads between the low federal funds rate and the LIBOR, which banks charge each other, the interbank lending rate, so despite this spread, banks barely touch the money provided via the Fed's discount window. Repeated and steep cuts in interest rates and the establishment of reciprocal currency swap lines fared no better. Banks were moribund and frozen in their tracks, paralyzed by fear. The Fed then proceeded to establish a term auction facility, TAF, doling out one-month loans to eligible banks. The Bank of England multiplied fivefold its regular term auctions for three months' maturities. And on December 18th, a week later, the ECB joined the fray by offering 350 billion euros to 390 banks at below market rates. Three months later, in March 2008, the Fed lent 29 billion US dollars to JP Morgan Chase to purchase the ailing broker-dealer Bear Stearns. On the same month, it, the Fed offered hundreds of billions of dollars to investment banks through its discount window, quite a revolution as the discount window was hitherto reserved for commercial banks only. The Fed agreed to accept as collateral securities tied to what it called at the time prime mortgages. Prime mortgages and subprime mortgages were basically in the same boat. The Fed doled out funds through anonymous options, allowing borrowers to avoid the stigma attached to accepting money from a lender of last resort. But interest rates for most of the lines of credits were set by the markets in these anonymous options, not by the Fed. The markets set the interest rates. So this removed the Fed's and other central banks' ability to penalize financial institutions whose lax credit policies were, to use a mild understatement, negligent. The control of interest rates was effectively transferred from the hands of the central banks to the hands of the markets. Moreover, central banks broadened their range of acceptable collateral, as I've mentioned, and this now, such collateral now included prime mortgages and even commercial paper. <clears throat> this shift, the revolutionary shift, completed the transformation of central banks from mere lenders of last resort to the equivalence of financial marketplaces. Central banks became retail banks. Fighting inflation 
the erstwhile raison d'etre of inventing central banks in the first place, has been relegated to the back burner in the face of looming risks of recession, protectionism, and potentially deflation. In September 2008, the Fed even borrowed money from the Treasury when its own resources were depleted. Unprecedented. As The Economist neatly summed the whole situation up in an article titled A Dirty Job, Someone Has to Do It, dated December 13, 2007, The Economist said, Central banks will now be more intricately involved in the unwinding of the credit mess. Since more banks have access to the liquidity auction, central banks are implicitly subsidizing weaker banks relative to stronger ones. By broadening the range of acceptable collateral, the central banks are taking more risks into their own balance sheets. Regulatory upheaval is sure to follow. Investment banks are likely to be subjected to the same strictures, reserve requirements and prohibitions that have applied to commercial banks since 1934 in the United States. Supervisory agencies and functions will be consolidated and streamlined so that they can overlook the entire financial landscape. Ultimately, the state is the mother of all insurance, the master policy, the supreme underwriter. When markets fail, insurance firms recoil and financial instruments disappoint, the government is called and it steps in to pick up the pieces, restore trust and order, and hopefully retreat more gracefully than it was forced to enter. The state would therefore do well to regulate the financial, to regulate all financial instruments, deposits, derivatives, contracts, loans, mortgages, forwards, options, all other deeds that are exchanged or traded, whether publicly in an exchange or privately, all of them should be heavily massively, intrusively, micromanaged and regulated. Trading in a new financial instrument should be allowed only after it was submitted, it been submitted to a review to the appropriate regulatory authority. A specific risk model must be constructed and reserve requirements and stress tests must be established and applied to all players in the financial services industry, whether they are banks or other type, types of intermediaries. This may be the lesson of this crisis.